By transcription, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Two boys. Mm-hmm. Where's Quine? Just got called upstairs. Didn't you run into him? Mm, didn't see him. Anything interesting in the line? Here's the sheet. Take a look. Mm-hmm. Mm, the Albert brothers. The second bunch, I think. Yeah, it's the second bunch. May I have your attention, please? Oh, I'm going to sit down. Oh, the wire see you later. Right. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you are sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Okay, bring on the line. All right, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front. You will back it up a little. Back right up against the wall. Okay, hands at your sides, face front. Now, when I call out your number, step out and look straight ahead. Keep your voice loud enough so everyone can hear you. Okay, number one, Ernest Fletcher, robbery. Stand up straight, take your hands out of your pockets. Don't look at me, look straight ahead. Okay, where do you live, Ernest? 553 West 109th Street. Hotel, house, or what? Hotel, I guess you'd call it. What do you call it? Everything I can think of. <laughs> How long you lived there? How long? Just about three years. Yeah, about three years, maybe a little more. Were you arrested with anybody? Yeah. Who were you arrested with? Girl. Name's, uh... I don't remember her name. Holt? Holt? Lisa Holt? Lisa, yeah, that was it. Lisa. She was with me when I got picked up. She didn't know nothing about it. She turned her loose. You have any weapons with you? Just Lisa. <laughs> Any weapons, Ernest? No. How about a car? No, I don't have a car. You picked me up before I had a chance to get a car. You own a car? No, I don't own one. Where are you from, Ernest? Detroit. I've been here about four years. Okay, step back, Ernest. Number two, Jack Casper, assault. <laughs> Where do you live, Jack? Washington Avenue. Talk up. Washington Avenue. 107 West Washington Avenue. Who do you live there with? Another guy. Willis Keith, I live with him. See the guy you hit? Yeah, he's the guy. Why'd you hit him? I don't know. I guess I just felt like it. He had it coming. He's in pretty bad shape. Might turn into manslaughter. I hit him hard. He had it coming. What'd you hit him with? The shovel. I was digging out back, and I hit him with the shovel. You just hit him? Yeah. I turned around and belted him in the face. He had it coming. You keep saying he had it coming. He did. Well, why? Why? Yeah, why'd he have it coming? I've been living with him for seven months. He's a terrible guy to live with. Anything you do, he's got something to say about it. You take a bath, he tells you you're doing it all wrong. He's been telling me I've been doing everything wrong for seven months. The other day, he told me I wasn't using the shovel right, so I belted him with it. Why didn't you leave? Why didn't you stop living with him? For a while, I thought maybe he was right. Okay, step back. Number three, Stanley Phillips, robbery. Where do you live, Stan? 8876 and a half South Adams. How long you lived there? Oh, I lived there, I guess, about a couple of years, I guess. Bad. Were you oh, arrested with anybody? Thank you. No. Uh, can I see? Weapon? Oh, sure. Yeah, automatic. Describe it. Well, it was a 45. I don't know. What's that? Just got a call from General Hospital. Twelve people have been carried in in the last hour. They were poisoned. Three more a few minutes ago. Well, that's that's fifteen people. 
What did it? Bad booze. What? Somebody sold them some bad liquor. They're going blind, having convulsions. Did you uh, talk to any of them? Not yet. They're all too sick. They're actually going blind? According to one of the doctors. Oh, there he is. Well, let's talk to him. His name's Archer. Uh, Doctor, this is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Quine. Oh. Hello, boys. How are you, Doctor? Hi. I was just called in, Doctor. Maybe you better brief me. Well, Lieutenant, there isn't much to brief you on at the moment. Fifteen or sixteen cases in already, and most of them are in very serious condition. Mm -hmm. Poison? Wood or methyl alcohol, probably. Four or five are already blind. Any of them well enough to talk to? Well, there's one that came in a short time ago. I I don't know his name. Mm -hmm. And he's well enough to be questioned? He was when I looked at him. He's pretty sick, but he seemed much better than the rest. This is pretty terrible. No telling how many people have gotten hold of this stuff. The bad liquor, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's homemade. Every one of the people who've been brought in are from the poorest section of town. We got some addresses from them, but the rest you can tell. Mm-hmm. Someone sold it for less than the government price, on that. Yeah, well, that's why I'm worried about this turning into an epidemic. It's bigger than just a party making it in the bathtub. Whoever brewed this stuff was planning on making some ready cash. If they've sold it to 15, they probably sold it to a lot more. Mm-hmm. Well, look, Doc, uh... I'd like to talk to this one man. Sure, sure. Just come this way. Going to need more space. The wards are already pretty full. Is, uh, is this man in the ward? No, no. He was for a while until he got better. Mm-hmm. He's on the cot in the hall. We need all the beds for the really sick ones. Uh, tell me, Doc, uh, any of the victims say where they got the stuff? No. In fact, I haven't asked them. Where is the ruddy man, Jeff? Oh, oh, I just want to talk to you, now, listen here. Uh, uh, how, do, uh, how do you feel? Well, I felt worse. I felt much worse. His name is Toomey. Uh, Stanley Toomey and I feel good enough to leave. Uh, who are all these guys? Well, Mr. Toomey, I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, and this is Sergeant Quine. Lieutenant? That's right, Mr. Toomey. This is Sergeant uh, Quine. Law? That's right, Mr. Toomey. Oh, I'm a very sick man. Doctor, I feel very sick, and I think I should rest for a while. I thought you wanted to leave. Well, I simply drank something and didn't agree. I haven't done anything you can throw me in the pokey for. You've been thrown in before, haven't you, Toomey? I want a lawyer. Oh, I feel very sick again all of a sudden. You excuse me. I have to be getting back to the water. Well, sure. Go right ahead, man. Well, look, I said I was very sick. I'm very sick. You can't just leave. You'll be all right, Mr. Toomey. All right. Doc, I'll tell you I'm very sick again all over again. I'll be like the rest of those rummies in there. Well, you're well enough to talk. Well, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm very, very sick. And you go walking off. Mr. Like Toomey, I, I think that I'm the best judge. Of well, then trade me stomachs. You talk to these men. I'll be back. Oh, no, fellas. Now, just a minute, Mr. Tony. We're not going to hold you in if we just want to talk to you. You got a cigarette? Cigarette? Sure. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. You just want to talk? That's right, Mr. Tony. Now, tell me, uh, where did you get the stuff you were drinking? Mm, Which stuff? Well, the stuff that made you sick. Well, I guess i got to confess to you. I've been feeling pretty bad lately. I've been awful low troubles, you know, and depressed kind of. I've been drinking on occasion. Just an escape. Oh, right? come on, Tommy. You've been escaping ever since I first knew you. Well, lately more than usual, I guess. Well, what's that got to do with the stuff that made you sick? Well, last night and yesterday and, you know, this morning, I was drinking. Kind of hard to tell what stuff I got sick on. Mm. Now, what were you drinking? Oh, various things. It's kind of hard to keep track. Oh, I was very depressed. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just to pick out just which one of the. Now, uh, when did you first get sick? Well, I remember when I woke up. Mm-hmm. And where'd you wake up? Well, I was lying down in a particular alley. Oh, what well, I mean, shelter that I was in. It's a little vague. You know. That's when you first got sick? Yeah, well, I had a bad stomach ache. I knew it was something unusual because I'd been drinking various things for some time, and I generally get by. Oh, maybe an occasional lapse of memory or a slight headache or something, but nothing like this stomach ache. Well, I got pretty sick, and oh, and then I had a most disgusting thought. What? Ulcers. Ulcers? Oh, I'd be a laughing stock, so I went directly to the hospital to find out. Mm-hmm. 
Well, tell me, uh, what time did you wake up in the alley? Well, I have no idea. Uh, well, what time did you go to sleep in the alley? I have no idea. Where were you before you went to the alley? Where was I? Yeah. Where was I? Before I went in the alley, huh? Well, just give me a second on that one now. I kind of think, um, where was I? You have no idea? Well, I remember going into Lemke. On River Street? That's it. What'd you drink there? Well, I spent my last 15 cents on something that Lemke was advertising at a very reasonable fee. Where were you before, Lemke's? Oh, oh no. Now, fellas. look, the sooner you answer, the quicker you can take it easy. Well, fellas, I was in so many places. I was in the Bleach Cat. I was in the Barrel. Uh, oh, no, the Barrel I wasn't in. I have given that place up. Max is not at all sociable. He forgets the people who kept his barn going during the tough days. But the last place you remember before the alley was Lemke's. Yeah, that's right, it was Lemke's. You know, all those bums they've been bringing, they might have gotten into some high-test gas. I knew a guy once named Wadley who drank 97 octane with orange juice. Holy cow. Well, it was very fatal. Did you drink any gasoline last night? I have no idea. Well, miserable district, isn't it? Every town's got one. There's one, Pete. Yeah, what do you guys want? Little talk, Lemke. The customers know you. You're going to ruin business. If we make them nervous, let's go in the back. Well, who's going to run the place? Let's go in the back. Come on. Uh, okay. What's wrong? Just want to talk to you. Huh? Want to go in the back room? Mm -hmm. All's good enough. All right. Now, come on. What's the beef? A bunch of people were carried into the hospital today. Yeah? They were all poisoned. Well, yeah, the guy did it. They've been drinking bad booze. Ah, my booze ain't the best, but I don't poison nobody. You been selling any illegal stuff? Illegal? What alcohol? Oh, stop. A methyl? Oh, now you've been here before. You know what I sell. What did you sell it to me last night? That rummy. What did you sell to him? I don't exactly remember. I sold him wine, I think. He sold it was something cheap. You know, everything's cheap. You guys know the trade I get in here. You know, to me, he couldn't buy nothing except wine or maybe beer. He says it wasn't wine or beer. Oh, look, boys, I don't care what that rummy says. He don't know what he's saying anyway. He's one of the biggest lushes. Some of those people they brought into the hospital have already gone blind. Blind? Yeah, some of them might die. Uh, look, I got to get back out in front. I can't leave the place with nobody to look after. It's Saturday night. I got a big crowd out Let's there. Let's see the bottle you served the wine to two me out of. I told you, I don't know what I served him. Let's take a look at your stock. My stock? Yeah. Show us your whole stock. Oh, Lord. Show us. Okay. Ah, see what you guys do to my business? Everybody's beating. Well, as soon as we leave, they'll all be back. Go on. Show us your stock. Ah. Uh, you guys have got to believe me. I, I didn't sell nothing illegal. Okay, here's the stuff. Take a look for yourself. An awful lot of stuff, but I'm going to start with anything that doesn't look good. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, will you? Yeah? I sold it. Okay, where is it? Here's the last of it. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. I bought it for four eighty a gallon. Ugh. Take a whiff, Ben. I didn't know how to make anybody sick. Didn't you sample it? No. All right, Small. We found it. I don't think you found all of it. Hello, Lemke. Small. We were able to talk to some more of the victims. I got a list of four more places like Lemke. I didn't know it was dangerous. You should have thought about it. They brought in seven more people. That makes 20. Where'd you get the stuff, Lemke? From a guy, I don't know who. I saw a chance to make a quick buck, so I bought six gallons from him. It's methyl alcohol, all right. They analyze it. Okay, Lemke, let's go. I'm in a lot of trouble, huh? Yeah, you're in a lot of trouble.
remember it, Florin. Methyl alcohol, mostly. Some artificial flavoring, some other things, but nothing important. How do you get methyl alcohol? Oh, you can get it. Anybody back in? Uh, should be. Yeah, uh, those bars were checking. Anybody back in? Roger. Got a call in from Crockett, and he said he was questioning one of the owners, and he'd be in as soon as he got something. Mm-hmm. All right, Lemke find anything in the mug file yet? No, not yet. He's still looking. I've got the artist coming down to see if he can make a drawing from Lemke's description. Lemke doesn't find anything in the mugs. Okay. Lemke didn't know the guy who sold him the stuff? He swears he didn't. What some guys will do to make a buck. Yeah. Well, it's been four hours since the first victim was brought in. Last report made it 33 people, six of them blind, half a dozen not expected to live. Hi, Pete. Hello, Small. Hospital called. Said they stopped coming in. No, oh, that's something. Said three of them had died. Talked with Doc Archer, and he said it was a good bet two or three more would die before evening. Well, who are the dead ones? Here's the names and addresses. Uh, how about families? Only one had a family, Arthur Jones, wife and three kids. Wife was at the hospital when he died. Well, whoever made that stuff couldn't have done better with a gun. Mm. Yeah? Crockett's coming in with the owner of the Riverfront Bar. Called in and said the owner, a man named Remington, admitted selling the stuff. Did the owner say who sold him the stuff? Said he didn't know the guy. Uh-huh. How about the other places? I haven't heard anything yet. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, just identify him, huh? Okay, thanks. A uh, band. Yeah? Asher just called from the mice and he says Lemke has found the man who sold him the stuff. Well, have him bring Lemke up here. Right. And check and see how those other guys are doing. And when Crockett gets here, have him bring his man up. Okay. Oh. Boy, I'm a little tired. It's kind of stuffy in here. I'll open the window. Good idea. Thanks, Pete. Uh, hey, what? Hey, look at that sunset. How about that? Yeah. No, I've lived here all my life. You really don't think about how great your own hometown looks till sometimes when you see a sunset like that. Even the south side looks kind of like a painting. Hey, uh, Paris is supposed to be the most beautiful city in the world. Think it is? Mm, I don't know. I've seen it in pictures. But I guess it's beautiful. Let's go be French cops and find out. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see Paris sometime. Yeah, I'd like to see a lot of other places. Huh? What places? Oh, Italy. You know, Rome, Venice. I like to see India. India? Yeah. I was a real good history student in school. I like to read about places. I always like to read about India. Here's Lemke. Okay. This is the mug you called out. Oh, Roger Peterson. Quite a record. Yeah. Are you sure this is the man, Lemke? Sure, that's the guy. Came into my place, asked me if I wanted to buy this stuff. Said five dollars. I said four and a half. I paid four eighty, like I told you. That's the guy that sold it to me. And last address, 9108 South River. I got to check on it. Uh, let's what, go over and see for ourselves. What's going to happen to me? How, how about going a little easy since I picked this guy out for you? Asher. Yeah? Crockett's coming in with another guy who's been selling the stuff. Show him the pictures and see if he bought it from Roger Peterson, too. All right. How about you, Lemke? I helped, didn't I? Three of those people who drank the stuff just died. Well, did, they, did they say I was the one that sold it to them? They didn't have a chance to say anything. Officers. Okay. Is there a Roger Peterson living here? Yeah, what'd he do? I just want to talk to him. Well, sure. What's your name? Seven. I run the place. What room is Peterson in? Second floor, number 12. Hey, there's going to be trouble. Not if we can help it. Then you don't mind if I leave the place for a while. Uh, we might want to talk to you. I'll just be down the block, staying out of the way of the trouble. You're going to try not to help. Hey, you better stay in your room. Well, what if there's some shooting? We'll try not to aim at the floor. Okay, I'll stay in. 12? Yeah. Into the hall on the second floor. He's probably sleeping. Always does in the daytime. Wakes nights. Doing what? All night garage. You got a key? Yeah. 
This one. I'll bring him right back. Okay. <laughs> Bet he collects his rent right on time. <laughs> Nine on this side, twelve on that side. I think we ought to go right in. I'll give him a knock. Yeah, knock again. He's in. He's really sleeping. Well, let's find out. Where's the bedroom? Mm-hmm. That must be in the way. He's in. Come on, Peterson. Come on, Peterson. Huh? Come on, come on. Wake up, wake up. Uh, huh? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, police, get out of bed. Police? Get out of bed and get your clothes on. Well, let me wake up, will you? Let me wake up. <clears throat> uh, what's going on? The right you got busting into my room. I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. What, what are you talking about? Get up and put your clothes on. We'll tell you all about it. Murder? You guys must be nuts. Now look, I told you to get up. Okay, okay. I'm up, I'm up. Okay? Where are your clothes? On the chair. But if you don't mind telling me, you guys come busting in here and tell me you want me on suspicion of murder. Yeah. And where's your warrant to come busting in here like this? Right here. Oh. Well, let me in on it. Who'd I kill, huh? Three people. Three? <laughs> Maybe more by the night. Me? Kill three people? You're nuts. Get into your clothes. What three people? Tell me what three people I'm supposed to have killed. The people who drank that stuff you've been selling. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll tell you all about it at the station. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't got my pants. I told you to hurry up. Well, let me at least get my pants on. And move. Okay, let's go. Watch out, him. I've had it. Leave me alone. All right, get up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm up. Look, I sold the stuff, sure. But I didn't make it honest. Who did make it? My boss. The guy I work for. Who's the guy you work for? Name's King. Dave King. We know Dave King. Yeah? Well, I work for him. At the garage? Yeah, at the garage. He bought the stuff and mixed it. I just peddled it for him. Where is Dave King? If he ain't home, he's at the garage. Honest, I didn't make the stuff. You believe me, don't you? Sure, Peterson. Here's your hat. What's on your mind? Who are you? What do you guys want? He asked you who you were. Maybe I don't feel like telling him. I think you better. We're police officers. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say your name was? Fisher. Sam Fisher. I'm a mechanic here. Now, when did you say Dave King would be in? He said I should be in any minute. Just called from the house, said he was coming right over. What's it all about? When did Dave buy six gallons of methyl alcohol? Methyl alcohol? Yeah. When did he buy it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know nothing about Mr. King's business. I'm just a mechanic. Well, you just wait around for Mr. King. When he comes in, I don't think it would be a good idea to tell him who we are. Well, he'll see you. We're just customers. We've got a car stalled down the block. You understand? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look around, Pete. Oh, uh, by the way, Sam. Yeah? If you decide to take a walk, don't. There's a dozen cops around the building. You try to find the methyl? Even better if we find a mix. Any garage owner might have methyl. Yeah. There's the door. Sam? Yeah? What's in here? Startle. Ben. Yeah. Take a whip of these barrels. 
That's it. Still enough in the bottom to hang him higher than that. The car just came out. That's King. Sam's gotten to him. He's getting out. Hold it, boys. Put away the gun, King. Sam tells me you're unhappy. We just found your mix. Too bad you weren't a few minutes later. You're going to dump those barrels and get out of town. Put down the gun. Place is covered. I didn't see nobody when I come in. King, the whole place is covered. There's a cop in the door right now. Oh, come on, Guthrie. Hey, drop it! You okay, Quinn? Sure. You better take Sam down to the station. Let's go, Sam. Tired? <sighs> you know it. Hey, ben. Yeah. Why India? Like I told you. I read about it and liked it. The innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of a suspect, have him help. The officer's